Okay guys, so in this episode, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my joystick for the Rolling Thunder. And we're gonna see, you know, about getting some switches in there. There's some that came with it. I bought this harness here. I have some extras over here. And of course, we're gonna be using some simple green products. I love this stuff. It's totally not sponsored or anything. But anyway, let's go ahead and just jump right into the video. All right, guys, so first things first, we're gonna grab the joystick. This is a special Atari logo joystick. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see it. It's a special logo that you see kind of put in there. It's engraved and it's really cool. It's a four-way joystick, has leaf switches over here, and then uh, you have the leaf buttons as well. I got a big deal, instead of a really good deal, for 60 bucks, I got this whole thing. It even included the interface board and some extra cables and stuff, which I don't need, but it's really good to have a backup. Um, but this joystick here, I'm really gonna focus on the buttons. We're gonna also um, do this later, but I'm gonna soak some things. So we're gonna take this apart, we'll throw it in, in some simple green. Uh, same thing over here. We'll probably take these out and soak them just so they get really clean. At least the top portions. I don't think the bottom need to be soaked or anything. But uh, this did not come with the buttons. Um, there are buttons on the actual game. They are yellow and red. But I do have, um, I don't have yellow in stock here, but I do have red ones that we're going to see if we can try cleaning up. But I do have a whole bunch anyway that I want to clean with the simple green stuff. So we might as well just stick them all in there and get them all done. So I have two versions of Simple Green. They were really cool. Um, they actually sent a donation to the channel where they sent me some products. Um, they've sent me stuff in the past. And this here is the regular one you buy in the stores, but I've never used, this one looks like, I didn't even realize it, but this one looks like industrial strength. Um, so it's a little different than this one. It's probably a little stronger. So I'm gonna try this one. I've never tried it before. Why not? Again, I'm not sponsored or anything. I'm not paid by them to do this. I just really think it's a great product and it's really good for the environment. And you can water this down too. Like if you were doing soaking stuff, you really can. This is right now, it's concentrated, but all of these. And you can, it says in the back that you can basically water them down. Uh, you do a one-to-one -one for heavy duty, then general purpose, you do the one to 10 dilution. So you put one ounce simple green and one cup water. And then for really light cleaning, you could do one to 30 dilution. Um, I always use it full strength. But um, you can if you wanted to do soaking stuff. And I think um, the Canadian Arcade uh, Chance was telling me that he's done it where you water it down and he didn't really notice the difference between the two, especially when you're soaking stuff. So, um, but I'm gonna use it full strength today because I'm really curious to see what it does. So we'll put this to the side for now, I guess. And what we'll do is we're just gonna use this one here. Um, I'm gonna take out the buttons. I have a whole bunch of buttons that I have, all these parts. There are leaf switches and stuff that I've just collected over time, you know, off of old machines. Uh, this is a new, well, actually, this is the older one. This is the new one. I actually bought these reproductions that some guy sold. I can't remember what site it was, but I've used these in uh, builds. I used it in my Donkey Kong build, my Donkey Kong bar top build, um, and it's leaf. It's pure leaf. It just, he constructed this adapter and, you know, it's basically the same thing. Um, these are new buttons. These have, I think they have a seam. If you look, there might like be like a little tiny seam there, but they're pretty close and they're really nice looking. So these here, this is an old one. That's a new one. That's the difference between the two. I'll show you up close. Um, I don't need orange, but I may have to put orange in there temporarily until I can get one <laughs> because I can't find any yellow anywhere. Um, I have red, no problem. So we're gonna take the red ones. We're actually gonna take them all and just soak them in here. You just take this here, kind of, Put your screwdriver in there, pop it open, and then just hold on to it. Comes right out. This opens up, and inside, you'll have that. So, so let's see, I'm gonna do a few more here. And then what we'll do is we'll let them soak. I'll probably add a lot more by the time you see the video. Oops, I almost dropped that. And this one here, you can tell, here's a good spring. And this one here is very rusted. So um, I can soak these two and then throw them in the tumbler and the rust will actually come off. <laughs> It'll polish it right off. So I might do that too. I might bust out the tumbler in this episode. So you got that. Let's get more red. Oops. And I know they're different sizes too. I should have measured beforehand on what it's, what's in there right now. I think these are in there. Let me see what this is. I'm gonna take this one apart and see what's going on here. 
So this is the size that I need. I know there's some that are longer. For example, this one here is super long. Can you see that? If you put them together, basically uh, this one's long and that one's short. So I need this side right here. But uh, I'm just going to take them all apart, throw them all in there, and then I'll figure out what sizes I need later. But I definitely need, uh, oops, I didn't need to do that. I definitely need yellow, which I do not have. So I may have to order it either from that side. I have to research. I'll just check my email to see where I did order it from. But for now, I'm just sticking them all in there. They're just really cruddy and old. And I took these off of old panels that I that got water damaged and stuff like that. So I've just collected it. It's always good to keep parts. That's what I tell people. You know, keep a bin. I have this huge uh, animal cracker bin from my kids. And by the way, these, this one I could tell is new because they don't have, they don't have that little clip. They just have these kind of, they're just like a one way where you push it through and then it stays in and it doesn't come out. So these aren't really cleanable, but, um, hmm. I wonder, there has to be a way that you pop them out. Maybe you just have to force it a little bit. I'll figure that out later. Uh, but let me stick a couple more in here. This is a long one. I'm going to clean one of these just in case I need it. And this one also doesn't come out. So I'm going to leave that on the side. I got to figure that out. This is brand new. Doesn't need it. This is brand new. Same thing here. These are all brand new. Um, I'll stick a couple blue ones in there as well. See, these don't come out. Yeah, I've never seen these. These look like old ones, but they don't have that E-clip. It kind of has like a tapered end here where you put it through and it stays there. So it looks like a little cheaper too. Yeah. So I'll leave those out for now. I'm only going to grab the ones with the E-clip. Like this is a long one that has, you can see the difference. Where's the other one that I just had? Yeah, this one's extra long. So I'm going to pop that off comes right off take out the metal and this one if you look inside it's pretty cruddy <laughs> so that will probably not come out with simple green um, but what you can do is um, you can lightly sand it and kind of sand it out or you can use Novus which is kind of like sanding it anyway it's like wet sanding it to get that out you won't really see it so it won't matter you do want to wet sand or use Novus on the edges and all that right here should come out no problem so Anyway, I'll throw them all in there. So these I can't take apart. This one I can. So I'm just going to take ones that I can take apart and throw them in there for now. I don't really need these, like I said, but I'm just doing it. Just for the sake of it. This one, yep. This one too. This one's almost a lost cause because it's really rusted. But I'll chuck it in there anyway. Uh, any more? Let's see, yep. Yeah, this one's really rusted. But still, you want to keep these nuts around, any pieces. Yeah, this one again, this one's spark on too, you can see. It's really rusted. <laughs> Inside too. But we'll toss them in there. And... And that tumbler, if you've ever seen it, uh, they work really good. They're actually made for gun casings, uh, the bullets, for people who want to, you know, reuse them. And oh, this one's totally hosed. You can see <laughs> it's crushed. So I probably have to throw that one out, but the shell's fine. So I'm using that. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take this out too. So there's that. There any more? This one is not removable, so I'm going to leave that alone. All right, and these are spacers. I'm probably going to give one to that Tim guy because I saw he was trying to make one out of balsa wood, which wasn't working on his Robotron Mini. And I have spares. I have two of them that I don't use. They're like little spacers for the leaf switches, and I know he needs them. So I'm going to see. I'll maybe send one to him, or when I see him, I'll just uh, give it to him. 
So that's it. So everything's all here. I separated most of it. Here are all the nuts. I'll probably throw those in the tumbler. Same thing over here. All the metal parts I kind of throw in the tumbler. This doesn't belong here. That's for a uh, HAP micro switch. And then I'll figure out and I'll throw these in the tumbler too. So all the metal parts. All right. So now it's nice and organized. I'm going to go ahead and take this here. This is the industrial strength version. I'm going to kind of... You want to put it in a cup and not a pail because you'll use more in a pail. So right now they're completely submerged. I'll put a little bit more. Okay. And just give it a little shake. Make sure it's all settled in there. You can see right here, I just have them all in there. Um, but yeah, so we're going to let this soak. I'll probably let it soak overnight. I just wanted to at least get this going so that tomorrow you can kind of see where they're at, um, brush them, and through the magic of editing, it'll seem instantaneous. So hang out. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're back. So um, this is just showing you what I did. This is a day later. Um, everything came out pretty clean. Uh, just to give you an idea, I'm actually going to show you this versus this. This is without it, without the simple green stuff, and this is with it. So it really brightened it up. Even though there's still rust inside, you won't really see that anyway. Um, but it really, big difference, this is kind of yellow, this is regular. You could do more if you want to scrub them down with Novus, which I may do in the, in the future, just to get these uh, looking like the brand new ones, because I do need to order a brand new set of yellow. I only have one yellow, um, and the other one, if I make it brand new, it'll look really weird. So I have to get two at a time. So I got the two yellow for the tops, and then the reds are the bottoms, which I should polish up. It'll look really good. So these are them here. And I purposely did not soak the ones that were in here. These are just spares that I had. Just wanted to kind of experiment to see how they came out. Uh, these weren't washed at all because they don't have, they have the metal inside. I didn't want to wet those. They don't have the removable E, e uh, clips there. So these I'll stick in the, uh, in the tumbler. I'll show you that later. But this is it here. So I just wanted to kind of spin it around just to kind of take them off with you. And just give it a quick little twist. That'll loosen it. I'm just going to do them all at once. This one here is a micro switch. <laughs> so I'm just going to remove it. All right, let's see if this will fit on here. And it does not. Wow. All right, we're going to have to do it the hard way. <laughs> well, you know what? Let me take these out first. So this is here. This is a nut. This one looks to be in good shape. I'm not even going to bother washing that or tumbling it. These are really dirty. And of course, they're the permanent kind. They're not the kind where they come off like this. So I may end up going with these. Technically, these are originals, right? I don't know. They look the same to me, so I might break the rules a little bit. Let me grab this one here. Yeah, I gotta hold it. That one I'll put there. And that one I'll put there. All right, so they fell right out. There's one, two, three. And this one I'll leave because I don't even need to take it out at this point. I'll do it later off camera. Let's go ahead and put this back safely in the machine so it doesn't get scratched up. Okay. All right, so it looks like these are the, what I call the permanent kind because once they pop them in there, you can't really take the spring out. I tried uh, hammering it out. It ended up breaking one of the... Uh, you know, I had like a spare old button, like a blue one or something, and I was like, let me try it, and it broke. So definitely can't take it out that way. So I'll have to just try to stick this in hole and see what happens, see how it comes out. But I'm probably going to order two more of these. And then I have these already, which are nice and clean. So I'll probably end up taking, which size are these? Yeah, those are the same size. And these look... I think way better than that. This one looks too, uh, you know, once I put the spring in and stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and dunk this in here. Hole, you can't take it apart. I tried to experiment it actually with this and it came out just fine. It came out nice and clean. So same thing with the yellow and the other red. And I just wanna measure. Yeah, so these basically, 
take the springs if I were to take one here. That's basically how it is. And it's gonna look it's gonna look great. So can't really tell them apart. So I'll soak those. This one here is already done. These springs I'm gonna stick in the tumbler. Um let me go ahead and do that now. I'll show you what it is. This is actually meant for um, it's a case tumbler, like for bullets. So some people like to reuse the bullets. They take the case, they kind of take all the stuff off of it, all the gunpowder and stuff. They tumble it in here and it makes them, it polishes them really well so that it, uh, you can reuse them. So in the arcade community, these here are really rusty. I'll show you beforehand. Let me see if I can get a couple. Man, these are really tangled up too. And this one here, I think this is the dead spring. It's really, really tangled up here. Now let me try a different one here. So this one is a little rusted. This one definitely has some rust. This one here has rust. So this is how it looks. I'm just gonna hold my hand out. So it has a whole bunch of rust all over it. And it doesn't do a perfect job. Like you could take a wire brush on this if you wanted to. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it in the tumbler and see what happens. Same thing with this spring. This is, I mean, this you can kind of get with a brush if you wanted to, but this one, you know, you'd probably warp it or break it trying to get that rust off. So I'm going to stick that in the tumbler, which gently takes the walnut, uh, the ground walnut and kind of polishes it. So I'm just going to stick them all in there. This one, it looks like this is from a previous, oh no, I stuck that in there. So I'm just going to throw them all in there. You just uh, put them in. I just want to make sure. I'm just looking at the condition of them. Yeah, might as well stick them in there. And then I have some polish as well, which you can put in after. I usually don't add the polish right away because I want it to be as, as abrasive as possible uh, with the walnut. And then I'll throw some Bright Boy polish in there to kind of make everything shine up. Yeah, you can see here. These are, in, these are in okay shape, except for that one right here. This one's really bad. <laughs> there you go. So that one may come out looking like those. So I'll stick those in there. There's some more. And this spring is kind of mis... It's kind of deformed a little bit, but I'll throw it in anyway. That one's tangled. And who knows, they may tangle up when I put them in there. I'm not sure. This one's totally gone. <laughs> I'll have to detangle that and stick it in later. These original three from Rolling Thunder look really good. So, oops. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these in here. So this is them here, this is the originals. They look great. There's nothing wrong with them at all, so I'm just gonna leave them as is. So I'm gonna put these on the side, not put them in. Uh, might as well throw these two in. Yeah throw that in there and this is just an, a spare red that I had around man these are tangled there's like an e-clip in there there we go and then you just stick the cover stick that on there get it nice and tight here not too tight it's plastic so you don't want to crack this has a washer here, but but it's. I know I want to get it pretty tight. There we go. Now it's starting to get tight. All right, and then you plug this in and let it go. So I'll plug it in real quick just to show you how it sounds and everything. But um, it's going to be pretty loud. So that's it, and you'll see it kind of just takes everything. I'll get in closer here so you can see. Can you guys see that with the reflections? It kind of just takes the, the uh, walnut, kind of brings it towards the center from the outside there. So, all right, so I'm gonna let that go. It's a little noisy, so I'm gonna put it in the other room. I'm gonna go ahead and move it. So let me go ahead and move it to the other room. That way it's nice and quiet. We don't hear it out here, and then we can continue with this other stuff. Okay, so we're back, so I am Taking this joystick, I'm not going to really do much. Um, I've been doing some reading and they said if it feels really mushy, 
the part on the top, then you have to really adjust it. And it really doesn't. Um, feels pretty good. We'll see, I guess, when I open it up. But I'm not really sure. There's no Eclipse over here. I'm not really familiar with these. Um, I asked for some advice from some guys. It does look really dirty inside here. But I asked for some advice from guys on the forums. And uh, I'm waiting for them to get back to me. But in the meantime, I figured it can't hurt to kind of take this apart here. So I'm going to at least get this. This doesn't come off this way. I want to see if I can get this out and throw it in simple green. If not, I'll have to just clean it uh, as best I can there. So there are diagrams on how to lube this. There's one point where you have to put some lube on there. I want to use um, grease. You know, the grease that you're supposed to. It says to grease it up, but I want to use silicon grease because silicon grease is really supposed to be good on rubbers. I use that when I'm changing my brakes on my car. You have the little um, pins that slide in and out. They're surrounded by rubber and you put that silicon grease on there and it's non-destructive to the rubber so it doesn't melt it. So I'm going to try and do that Let's see what happens. Plus it's less messy. It's white. Um, I put it on my outrun as well. So far it's been working great. No issues. It was really, the outrun was filthy. You can ask Tim, by the way, subscribe to Tim at that Tim guy. He helped me out with my outruns. If you look at the episodes, him and Mike, uh, Mike doesn't have a channel, but Tim does. And I think Tim's doing his Robotron. I'm going to actually send them these pieces here. I was taking these leaf switches apart and he needs these for his mini. Uh, they're just like plexi that are drilled and they're spacers for the switches. So I'm going to, I have spares. I don't need them. I figured I'll give it to him. All right. So let me go ahead. So as soon as I took that out, I saw dirt come out. I want to see if it was crumbled washer. Yeah, I see one right here. Looks like a plastic washer. Yeah, there's one right here too. Let's see if I missed any other ones. Yeah, that's all that's there. I'm quickly just uh, tapping it to see if it comes out. So these two washers I'm going to stick in there. Looks like they were on these little pieces there, but I don't see any other ones here. I'm looking at it. And then this looks like it comes out now. All right, so that looks like it's pretty dirty. And I think for the, I have the leaf switch. There's a, from what I understand, there's a micro switch version that has like a ring that deteriorates and people are using polyurethane instead. And I have the link to get that, but I don't think mine has that because mine is a leaf version. So this looks like one piece. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't come apart. It doesn't look like it does because it's, all connected here. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to soak this. It doesn't look like there's anything in there, just dirt. So I'm going to take that, throw it in the simple green. All right, so we're back. So I took this opportunity. I got a phone call. I got interrupted and, um, you know, I zoomed in a little bit for you guys. So this right here just came out. It had these little nylon washers, these tiny little ones right here that I'm putting on the side. Not really sure, you know, if we need four but there were only two in there. Uh, look, they weren't crumbled or anything, like all this that fell out. Oh, actually, there's one right here. I lied, and there's another one. So I did find all four. <laughs> you know what it is? This is so light here, I couldn't tell. But yeah, so there's four little things you gotta be careful when you're taking that out, I guess. So I just took it out. This is it here. I'm gonna put that to the side. This I can probably throw in Simple Green. Just toss it in there. Um, looks like this whole thing comes off now. And I probably want to remove these switches and give this a little wash here with a brush. Same thing with the inside. It's really dirty. Um, oh, man. Look at all that dirt. That's crazy. It's like 30, 40 years of dirt. Um, does this thing come out? Yeah, it does come out. You have to pull it out, but you have to... There's like a spring there. You have to remove this somehow. So I'm curious how I would do that without <clears throat> just looking in here to see. This is the first time I'm doing this, guys, so I'm just cleaning it off with a little screw here that I have, scraping stuff off. It's really caked on there, that dirt. That one looks so far, that looks good. That ball looks good. Doesn't really look too worn, it just looks old. So I think what I have to do is get this pin out somehow. And I got to read up on how to do that because once I do that, I'll be able to pull the whole thing out and get in there and 
clean everything. So I believe when you have to lube it, I think it's, it looked like this part here had to be lubed. But I'm not really sure. But yeah, so I'm looking at here, it's really, really dirty here. And it doesn't unscrew, I don't think. So it looks like this will pop out. I just gotta figure out how to get that out of there. Do I just push? Is it one way? Is it tapered? And yeah, so let me do some research. I'm gonna come back and just gotta figure out how to remove this thing here. You guys can see, I'll give you a close up here. But there's like these uh, pins on there. I'm turning it right now. And you have to pop this out, I guess, in order to get it to go down because right now it doesn't do anything, so. All right, so let me go ahead. I'll do some research. I just don't want to force it out and then have a broken joystick. So let me research it. It's better to do it nice and slow than to kind of rush things. All right, guys, so I did a little more research and it turns out it's really complicated. <laughs> um, I had to actually stop and go out to Harbor Freight and get a um, pin punch set because these will actually take it out. I have my vise, which I'm not gonna actually do here. I have it here just in case. I'm gonna put it on the side and I'll move the camera, but um, I definitely, this is glass underneath, tempered glass from my uh, Arkanoid, so I don't wanna be hammering on it and break it. So I'll put that on the side for now. And I also bought, just in case, because um, I heard these pins tend to bend, there's pins on here that I have to kind of take out, like this right here has to come out, and uh, this one right in there has to come out. And I didn't buy three-in-one oil, but this, I have a little bit of oil left over. Uh, so I'm gonna use it, it's all I have on hand right now. Um, but here, this is a pin assortment. So this is the roll pin. That's the same thing that's in there. It's all assorted sizes. It was only like, uh, I want to say it was like $4, maybe $5. Um, obviously, I don't need the big ones here, but I have the small ones. So we'll see what fits. If I do need that, I might not need this, but it's the worst when you're doing something and then you have to stop and go out to the store just to get stuff. I'd rather have it here, have it on hand and be good to go. So first thing I'm gonna do, you can still see the dirt. This is all the dirt that came out of it. I'm sure there's gonna be more, <laughs> but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and oil. Let's pour some oil here. Put some on this side as well. Maybe inside. And uh, that's what I was told uh, helps. It's still pretty hard to get out. Um, and I'm gonna kind of figure out what size I need at this point. And I did order the, I can't remember what it's called. It's this piece right here. It's that uh, plastic piece inside. I looked at it, it is pretty worn. So um, I did order it and those things are expensive, man. I got it from Arcade Fix It. It was like 25 bucks just for that piece of plastic alone. And then I did get an extra spring just in case because I'm pushing it through and it doesn't go in all the way. I have to kind of push it into place. I'm not sure if it's because of that right there. Uh, I think it's called the plunger actually. Uh, so I have to redo that. So I, I ordered it. It was an extra like, you know, a few dollars for that spring. And so I ordered it. So it should be here soon. But with the magic of editing, I'm sure we'll see it right away. But uh, let me go ahead and take this out. I've never done this before. Other than that, everything looks pretty clean and good. I'm going to reuse this. I was told if you flip it upside down, because this part here gets worn. If you flip it upside down, this part's not worn and I can get away with it. So I, I'll probably do that. This looks good too. It's not worn at all. And then uh, the inside, of course, is so. Let's work on getting this thing out. Um, I'm gonna try just pulling it out, this one here, just to see what happens. Um, I'm not sure if it'll work if I brace against it. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna work. So, let me go ahead and set up my camera. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the vise and then the size that I need, I'm gonna open this now because I just bought this. I'll just lay out the whole thing. Keep those handy in a bag. I'm probably gonna need, yeah, that looks like the size right there. Or maybe a little smaller. Yeah, I might need that size. Actually, it looks like this size. Cause you don't wanna, I wanna hammer it, but I don't wanna hammer, I mean, this is metal and this pin is metal. I don't wanna hammer on here, it'll crack it, break it. And then this one, I can probably use a bigger one. Probably one of these, these wider ones here. Just smack it on there. They said you could also put it on wood. I did some research. If you put it on wood, drill a hole. You can put it against the wood there. And then you're hammering into that hole. 
uh, that's on there, but I figured I have a vice so I can do it that way. So let me go ahead and set it up and uh, we'll resume here. I think that's the right size, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is coming out. That's good. And I'm actually messing this up by doing that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about frustrating. Man. They weren't kidding when they said these were really poorly designed, man. So I'm going to just try pushing it through. I'm doing this kind of off camera where I'm... Man, I might have to order this. I think I just screwed it up, to be honest, because there's dents. I don't know if you can see that. I kind of dented it right there. Here's what not to do. I'm probably, I probably could sand it, but uh, it was really, it was this just digging into it. Um, what I should have done is like I wanted to do like that. Let me keep trying this way. Yeah, see it coming out? You guys see that? So that's it right there. It's like kind of coming out. So I guess if you do it, you can't have the plastic piece contact anything. Yeah, it's starting to come out. Yeah, at this point I'm inside the metal rod, so I should be okay. If I just kind of hold it like this. Yeah. Wonder if I can put it on here. All right, so it's right now I'm able to turn it with the vice grip. So I'm just taking it and I'm just pulling it out. There we go. So I got it. So I had to pinch the end. <laughs> some of them are super easy to take out of here and some are super hard. So now that this is out, uh, this thing should come right out. There we go. So this is it. That's the piece. You can see the damage that I did to it right there, but I'll probably end up replacing it. I'll probably just have to order this piece. And I think they're new old stock. I don't think they make them at all. So now we got to do part two. That's this right here. And I got to figure out how the heck am I going to, I guess I got to hold it on the edge here and just whack it. But the thing is you need like, I'm going to try this way. You might flatten it out, but oh, actually it is coming out. This one's coming out a little easier. That's good. So what do you guys think? How should I balance this thing here? <laughs> uh, maybe that, piece of wood with the hole is the way to go man because the wood is soft enough where it won't mess this up and it'll help me do that yeah you know what that's what I'm gonna do so let me um, grab a piece of wood an old piece of wood the drill and I'll go ahead and try it that way okay so we're back so Originally, I drilled a hole here, not realizing, um, you can see the oil, I was trying to get it in there, not realizing that the joystick will not, you can't lush, put it flat. So you have to kind of get it on the edge. I actually drilled a couple holes. This one might be, yeah, that one's a little too far. So this one, oh, perfect. All right, so what I'm going to do, I have a hanging just in case it's longer. Um, and then I can go ahead and pop this in here. And hopefully, get this sucker out. Yeah, it's working. I really wish I had a little tiny bit skinnier one. I don't want to hit the plastic and then have it shatter on me. All right, perfect. So it's all the way through. Here's the other piece here. I might be able to reuse this. Um, but if I can't, 
I have a whole set that I can pull from. So now that it's out, finally. So I guess that's the way to do it, guys, is just get a piece of wood, drill a hole in the edge, especially for this one here like that, and then you can just punch it through and you won't damage the plastic there. So I'm taking that out. Hopefully this will slide off. That's the other battle now. Yeah, it's sliding off. Cool. It's all lubed up, have all this oily grime everywhere. And then this should come right out, and it does. So I'm going to leave this here because it's super dirty and oily, and I don't want it getting on my workbench there. So this should pop out. There we go. And it does look worn. You can see the edges. Oh, man. Can you hear that? I'm going to take it off. Right now I'm putting it near the mic. It's kind of crunchy. <laughs> so yeah. So I ordered this. This is the piece that I ordered. I ordered this and the spring. Not sure if the spring is still good or not. I'll have to compare it. Uh, this can be soaked in simple green. Same thing with this. And then this. Looks like there's some rust in here too. There is some, it's really funny, you see some shaft wear right there. It gets like fat and then skinny. But I think it should be all right. Because that's the part that's on here. Wow, it's amazing. When I peered inside and I moved it, I really thought this was a piece of rubber in there. That's how like flimsy it is. But I did order a new one. Um, I'll probably have to order a new one of these. We're gonna stick it in just in case, just to see what we can do. It's not cracked or anything. But I, what I may do is take some sandpaper, like really, really fine sandpaper, to try to kind of get these little things that I just dented. <laughs> that sucks. Oh well, now you know what not to do when you're doing it yourself. And that's going to cost me too. I'm sure these things are expensive, if they even make it. But I'm just kind of sanding out the roughness that I just did because it's kind of sticking up that's not too bad we'll see what happens all right so um, I do have my buttons and stuff in here what I'm gonna do is just chuck these in there I'm gonna wash this anyway even though I'm not gonna use it and I'm chucking that in there um, I might as well degrease these things I know I'm not really supposed to wet those but I'm doing it anyway they're pretty much shot and I'm gonna dip this in here too I'm trying to just, uh, I'm going to use my old towel that I have here. Wow, it's really dirty. So what I may do is stick it in a drill chuck. You put this part in there into the drill, and then you spin it, and I'll put some sandpaper here to kind of get the oxidation off. But, uh, yeah, really messy. But it's out. And this looks to be in great shape. I'm going to dip it in here now. I've never washed this at all. Just to see what we got here. And I may polish it up with some Novus. Yeah, it looks really good. I think we'll leave it as is. But, yeah. So, I guess let's clean that up. I'll probably stick it in a drill right now. Alright, so let me... Um, I'm going to chuck all this stuff in here. We'll let it soak. Uh, this I'll probably end up washing in the sink. You can see I'll just spray it with Simple Green and then I'll come back. So this is it before and then we'll see how it looks out, um, after I wash it. And before I forget, what I wanted to do is take this apart here. So I'm just going to take the leaf switches out because I don't want anything to happen to these. keep all that together because I'm going to wash this in the sink as well and I won't show you I won't bore you with that detail I'll just show you the before and after <laughs> all right so it goes in the one on the end here one two three four these little points here all right so I'm going to go ahead that's the before that's the outside and then uh, this is the before and that's the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and wash these and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so we're back. So we have the before and after. I have them right here. So this is the after. Look at this, guys. <laughs> Beautiful. Same thing with the outside. I'm not really sure about the wear here because I can't, I'm no expert, but it seems like it's okay. We'll see what happens. I see a little bit right here, uh, but we'll see. And then this one here, um, it's still a little wet. I didn't really get in there with the towel too much. Um, but yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, let's see how it comes out. I think it goes like this. Yeah. With the plastic pieces on there. And then uh, that's the joystick there. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick this in the drill chuck. I'm going to go grab it and then we can kind of sand this down um, so that it ends up being like, you know, not corrosive because this is all rust right here. All right, guys, so we're back. So I grabbed my drill. Um, let me get this out of the way. I don't want it to spill here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and see if it'll fit. I don't know if it'll fit. It might be too big. Yeah, it is too big. But normally, of course it is, you know, it's an Atari joystick. But normally you would kind of stick this inside the chuck of the drill and then spin it. And then what I had planned to do was to hold sandpaper on it kind of like this while you're drilling it and it spins it. So now I'm just going to have to do this <laughs> manually, which I wasn't looking forward to. Um, hmm. I'm trying to figure out an alternative. I don't think this is the only drill I have and that's the biggest. I'm sure there are bigger ones out there. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll do it by hand. So first one, let's get this out of the way here. First I use, I'm going to use 220 grit and then um, I'll polish it up at 400 afterwards, which is what I had here. Um, man, that sucks. I really wanted to show you guys that. Um, I will show you the buttons though. These buttons here, maybe what I'll do is I have some Novus here. I was going to throw some Novus just to polish it up. Um, this is fine scratch remover. There's usually three sets. There's three, two, and one. Uh, one would be just to take out heavy scratches. Um, I'm probably going to skip that. And then this one here is to uh, fine scratch remover, which I'm going to use. And then this one here is just a uh, nice shiny. It buffs it really good. So I'll definitely use those. But for now, let me see what I can do with the 220. Oh, I already took it out. Okay. So let me put this on the side. Probably won't need this whole piece right here. So I'm going to just take half of that. And I'll fold it. And I'm just going to take it and old manual labor, right? Before we had power tools. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it around as best as I can. And I guess what I'll do is I'll, since I'm righty, I'll turn this part here. I just want to get this crap off it, you know. I thought about kind of going like this, but I don't think that would do it in even. Well, actually it might. I'm getting crap all over the place. Let me actually just throw that there. Yeah, let me do that first. I'm just going to get a lot of the heavy stuff off. I'm just rotating it as I go. Because that stuff is nasty. I guess I could use a wire brush on it, a power tool. That might work, but for now, well, this seems to be working pretty well. I'm actually blocking my light here. Yeah, it's working. I feel this is the quickest way by doing it what I'm, the way I'm doing it now as opposed to rotating it around like I just did. Switch around. Look at that rust. I wouldn't go any harsher than 200 though, because you don't want to scratch it up or wear it down prematurely. 
All right, so let's try this now. It's looking really good. Way better than it was. Look at all that rust. It's got a different section here. Try it again. This would have taken two seconds with the drill. <laughs> I'm actually turning it in one direction. Because I can do this, but I feel you miss spots when you do that. Because you can't turn it all the way. I mean, I can for a little bit. Turn it. Turn it once. Rub it. Turn it once and rub it. I guess it works. Turn it once, rub it. Turn it once, rub it. Turn it once. Man, your hand gets tired quick. And yeah, it's looking great. The goal is to get this rust free and corrosion free so that it doesn't keep eating away at it, <clears throat> making the metal soft. You want to kind of nip it in the bud. All right, that looks great. So now I'm going to take the 400 grit just for kicks. And this is like double, it's really fine, I can feel it. Turning it once, back and forth. Turning it, back and forth. Turning it, back and forth. And this here, <clears throat> I could probably get rid of these with the Novus. They look pretty deep, actually. I wonder if I do need, need to use three on that part. <clears throat> I just don't want to scratch this up because it looks so good. Anyway, let's try two. Um, I bought a rag. What did I do with it? I must have left it in the other room, but all right, we'll use this big one here. So I'm just moving that over. I'm going to shake it up. And I'm going to put a little bit on this towel here. This towel I just used to clean the other thing, so it's really dirty. So this is two. Probably want to put a little more than that. All right. And it's worth it. That thing lasts years. <laughs> that Nova stuff. So here it is. I'm just going to kind of... It's really made for plastics. I have Bright Boy, by the way, which I'm going to use on the bottom part. So anyway, I'm just turning it. Kind of getting into that. The bottom shaft. I really don't want to touch the top of this stuff. Actually, it's not doing a bad job at all. So what is this, number two? Yeah, the three is where I didn't want to touch the top. So let's try it. Put some more. Put that on the top. It might get inside where the Atari logo is, but we'll try to make sure it doesn't stay there. I really just want it on the surface. I'm just rubbing it everywhere here. I'm twisting it. All right, let's see how that looks. So I'm going to just use a clean part and just take everything off what I just put on. I don't think we need this anymore. There's no more rust to catch. It 
So this is just number two. Number one makes it super shiny. So I'm just holding the ball top, twisting it around. Gonna just cleaning all that crap off, scratches. So far, look, it's looking great already. So, okay, so I put a little bit on here. Um, just a tiny bit, goes a long way. These bottles, man, they're huge. <laughs> um, I might won't tighten up. There we go. So I got that on uh, Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's pretty easy to get. Uh, they unfortunately come in huge bottles, but this thing will last forever and you use it for everything. I use it on my Defender uh, restoration where I polished up the door. And we're going to have to visit that one day. Um, I know the guy who bought it, um, and we're going to head to his game room one time and figure it out. So I'm just rubbing this on really quick, and then once I do that, um, we're just going to do this. Put it all over. And it looks great. Look at that. All right, so let me go ahead and spray the other stuff on. That's the final product right here. I'm going to put it right here. I can hear we got folks upstairs. <laughs> it's probably the baby coming home, making tons of noise. So I'm going to have to kind of come back to this later, but I at least wanted to spray this. Um, I'm using part of the clean towel here. And you really want to buff it. It looks really awesome if you have it in a drill. It buffs it so shiny. Like it's really hard to to explain how great it looks. But that looks like already like a hundred percent like better. It looks really good. All right. So that's it. Check it out. Awesome. You can see the Atari logo right there. Looks really cool. So I would say this is done. We're just going to wait for the parts. So let me go ahead and snap my fingers. <laughs> And in two seconds, we'll come back with the part that we need because it probably came in the mail. Okay, guys, so we're going to rebuild the joystick at this point. I simple greened everything. It came out really good, looking really nice. Um, I have the washers right here. These are like nylon washers. I guess you can get these if you lose them at a uh, local hardware store, Home Depot uh, or Lowe's or, you know, whatever, Ace Hardware. So luckily, I had them. I caught that they were on here. I didn't realize it at first, but they go inside here. This is the restrictor. You can see it's four-way. It's kind of like a where this little piece right here will fit once it's on there. It'll kind of fit actually this way. It'll either go there, 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 and then kind of like you can't hit the diagonals because it's a little fatter here. Almost looks like a four-leaf clover there. Um, so definitely don't want to lose those when you're taking it apart. Um, there was some rust on the edge of these. Um, I could have. I guess I can still. Maybe use this on it. This is just kind of like a scouring pad. Um, I didn't even think to use it. Uh, but yeah, some of the rust is coming off, but it's not a big deal. It's gonna be buried inside there and it's gonna be contacting um, plastic parts anyway. So it's not gonna spread or anything like that. Uh, I really should have done that ahead of time, but at this point, it's good enough for me. Um, I am gonna use this to kind of lube it up. This is a silicon paste. Um, it's kind of like of a white, um, you can see here, it's just made of silicon and it's uh, dielectric grease. And it's, uh, you know, it says here it lubricates, prevents oxidation, safe on metal, rubber and plastic parts. So that's really what I wanted. I didn't want to wear it down. I know for the micro switch version, this is a leaf version, but for the micro switch version, it has like a band on the bottom that's made of rubber and this stuff will just eat right through it and usually turns it to goo. Um, so. But I don't have to worry about that. But still, you know, they are plastic parts, so I'm going to use this stuff. They also have a spray you can use, but the spray is really for metal to metal parts, uh, like Nintendo joysticks and stuff. So I use this; works really well. Um, I use this on my Outrun gears, um, and it works really great. And also the metal to metal, you know, when the whole steering wheel shifts back and forth, and it works great. Um, <clears throat> I decided to replace this. I can use this if I wanted to. I mean, it's in pretty decent shape. That's the part that goes through this part right here. Um, but when I put it through, when I first had it, it was a little big. And that part kind of rubbed up against the bottom here. Um, I don't really think it's supposed to do that by design. I think it's supposed to, because this got so worn out, you can see it was worn right here. That part goes on here. You can see it fits right in there with the worn side. But when you flip it, it's more like it's supposed to be a factory. 
So, and then this part here doesn't touch anything, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip it over. So I'll save money because these things are 25 bucks a pop. Same thing with this. This is $25 as well. Um, but you can't find them anywhere. I got it at arcadefixit.com. And uh, it was 25 for this. And then I paid, I think I got the spring in addition to everything else. Um, what did I do with the original spring? I'm not sure what I did with it. Oh, you know what? It's in the... Um, it's in the tumbler. I can go get it and we can compare it if you want. Uh, but I ordered a new one. I figured what the heck, right? You know, it was only like, you know, $7 or something, which is kind of expensive, but um, it was the one that fits it. And I just said, well, I might as well save on shipping and I ordered it too. Um, if I had caught that I messed this up a little bit when I put it in the vise, um, I probably would have ordered this as well, but I could probably get away with this. Um, <clears throat> doesn't really need to be smooth, just needs to be big so it'll fit you know, when it's moving around, I think it'll be fine. If I have trouble in the future, since it's on the end of it, it's kind of easy to replace where I can just pop it out. And I do have more of these pins. The other pin I had was crushed, but I did luckily find this in that kit that I had. Um, I'll show you the kit real quick, just in case. This is it right here. I just got it from, uh, had a roll pin assortment from Harbor Freight. Uh, this was like, I want to say it was less than $5, maybe like $4 or something like that. Um, so to me it was worth it and I have spares just in case. And then this one is a little shorter than this, like I said, you can see right there, difference in size, um, that it's smaller. So it should be fine. It will go through it when I checked and, uh, hopefully it won't rub up against the bottom like the other one did. So I think I'm in good shape. So, um, again, you know, this rubbed up against it and it made it really thin. And then that's the, how it's supposed to be. The good one, the bad one. Flip it over, you see the same thing when I'm turning it. So this is the bad one. So I'm glad I'm replacing this. Um, also, when this was in here, you could see this one here, kind of rides along the top there. Um, I don't know if you remember when I was trying to push the joystick in, I thought it was spring was bad. It turned out that this is not supposed to fit in there. It's not, it's supposed to just ride around there and move around. Um, and pivot around this one got so worn down that it kind of went in if you if I press it, it kind of fits in there and it gets stuck where you can't take it out so you know it it's definitely not what you want so I'm glad I did realize that that was bad fortunately you had to take the whole joystick apart to get to it uh, but we'll put it back together okay so we're back so I checked I actually have the manual right here and um, it says that you're only supposed to lube the bottom portion that's this piece right here um, but I'm guessing that's only because, um, you know, this is just maintenance um, for, it's actually on the other page right here, lubricating the joystick. It says just to do <clears throat> a light film on there, and it says indicates lubrication point, and it's right there. But I have a feeling that this is lubricated, and so is the top piece. Um, but they told you just to do that, just to, you know, make sure that um, you don't have to take the whole thing apart and take all the pins out. So because this is being done technically at the factory, I'm going to put some lube on the bottom of this. Um, actually, yeah, it's over there, so I'm going to take this one away. I'm going to put it on the bottom of this right here, whatever contacts there, and then I'm going to put some on right there here so that when this ball rides on it, it'll be lubricated as well, along with this piece, which goes to this end right here. So I'm thinking the only reason, like I said, that they had that was because they assume you're not taking it apart because all you can see when you don't take it apart is that right there. So. <clears throat> so yeah all right so let me go ahead and close this we know where, where to go I can kind of just put this on the side so let me put it over here actually out of the way all right so I'm gonna take some of this grease um, what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take a paper towel I'm gonna apply it with my fingertip because um, I really don't want to gob it on there and if you use this right here, it just totally gobs it. So I'm just going to take a little tiny bit like that. That's probably too much, actually. Let me take a little bit off. It says a thin layer, so um, I'm going to put a thin layer right here. Just underneath. I'm going to just grab a little bit from my paper towel. Probably along the edge right here. So I'm kind of doing that on the edge. And right there. All right. 
So I forgot to put the spring in. And I wonder if I should lubricate the spring a little bit too. You know, kind of just stick it on. So that goes right there. Um, hmm. You know what? I think I am. I'm not going to put very much. I'm going to just do this. Tiny bit on there. And then just kind of have it go around. Just on that top portion. All right. Figured it can't hurt it. That goes on there. <clears throat> so that goes on there first. And then we're going to put this on kind of second, which goes over there. That makes more sense to me now. And that goes in there. Okay, so that makes a lot more sense. All right, so then again, we're not going to put this end there. We're going to take the lubricated side that goes down. And the worn side is going to face this way now. And let me see. See, now it makes it a little more difficult because it has a spring in there. So I'm going to have to kind of hold it like that. Well, what I'll do is I'll uh, have this start just a little bit here. I mean, you got to put something under the joystick because it's just, it's almost impossible doing it the other way. All right. Yep, so right now it's hitting there. So now I got to point to where it has to go. Which is right there. All right, guys, so my battery had died for my microphone. Um, so I'm just kind of doing this again. I just take regular pliers and I had to kind of take, instead of taking the whole thing apart, um, cause it felt really good. Um, and I'm just testing the actuator to see if it fits and all that stuff. Um, what I ended up doing was just, you know, taking out the top portion here and not the bottom piece. Cause the bottom piece is really a pain in the butt to take out. Um, but I did get it in there. I got the pin in there. I used that. I kind of punched it in there. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to remove it for you guys for posterity's sake. Um, just so you guys see how to do it. You know, just to pop it in there. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because there's a whole uh, way you assemble it where you have to put the spring in. There's a spring you'll see inside along with the dust washer. So I'm carefully just removing it. I'm doing it lefty here just to get more leverage. Okay. And then I'm using the punch, the pin punch to get the rest out. It's relatively simple on this one. That was super easy to do. Um, the other one was just a pain because it's so small. Um, so that one's there. I'm just kind of pushing it down now just to get the spring and just to wiggle it out. It comes out. Obviously, it doesn't come out all the way because that other one's on the bottom. But um, if you look at it here, you can see that one right there. It's really tiny. It was just really hard to do. So like I said, I'm just going to leave it in there. But you still can see exactly. Uh, there's enough wiggle room there to kind of show you exactly how it goes in there. So on the top, you have the shaft. You put the dust washer first. Can't forget that. And then you got to get the spring. And what I did was in between there, I took some lubrication and I put it inside before I put the spring on. You put it basically where the spring is located, where it slides in, you slide the spring in, you put the plunger right on top. You don't need any loop for that, but you do have to put lubrication. I'll show you on the old one here. You have to put lubrication on the outside and then on the portion that touches there. And then you slide that on, you slide the whole housing on. And then because it's spring loaded, it's kind of hard uh, to hold it while you're putting that in there. So. I'm going to go ahead here and just to uh, put in the pin. Let's see where is it? There it is. So the pin is right there. You kind of just line it up. And I'm just smacking it in. You don't actually have to be exactly where you need to go. You ha I'm just banging it onto the metal rod itself. And then when I feel resistance, then I can hold it and uh, figure out like, you know, where to do it and where to put it. So I'm sliding it into place. I'm trying to line it up with the hole takes a little, may take a few tries because the spring is fighting you, trying to hold it with one hand. I mean, if you had two people, it'd be easier. One person can hold it when the other person hammers it in. But, uh, you know, through trial and error, you'll figure it out. And you just want to be really delicate. You don't want to hammer down too hard. I'm hammering with the other side of the hammer just because it reaches further down. Um, and right now, yeah, it's still not going in. So I'm still futzing with it, trying to get it in the hole there. Once it goes in, you can really feel it. I think at that point, 
yeah, it did. So now I can hold it by that portion there and it's easier to do. So I'm just double checking to make sure it's going through and it looks like it is. So I'm trying to line up the hole and that was the other part that was a pain. I was lining up the hole, I had to actually pull on it to resist the spring. And it's still coming through, I'm just going through. Uh, but that's what you got to do, you know, it's not fun to do, but it's really worth it in the end because the stick comes out really, really great. There it is. Now it's flush with the wood, so now I can kind of line it up with the hole. And, you know, just take your time. Don't smack it too hard. Uh, don't, you know, do like if you're putting steel in there. Don't whack it because then if you miss, you'll hit the housing and crack it. Or you can crack the... Uh, the little ball itself right now I think I hammered it too much see it's not even so you have to make sure it's even because um, when you do put it back in the housing um, it has a slot where it goes into and you'll see in a second that you have to make sure it's all lined up too so there it is I'm just being a little super picky that it's not correct <laughs> you know but just take your time you know and then that looks good right there, I believe. All right, so I think what I got to do now is um, I'm just kind of explaining that that's the part that's worn. It's not touching anything, so you get a brand new one by just flipping it over. And then that part, actually, I thought it touches there on the four-way actuator, but it, in reality, it really doesn't. You're actually... That other white piece that's next to the lubrication up there is what's hitting um, the, uh, you know, the four-way restrictor there. Okay, so you have the other part here. And I looked at it and I said, you know what, I'm going to put some more lube. So, you know, still don't, be t don't put too much on there. You don't want it like gobbed up with, with uh, lube. But I'm just putting it in there because it was hard to reach. And then I'm just kind of spreading it around on my finger. And then... Um, I'm being really neat about it, so on the other side, you'll see I actually wipe some off. Because I can see it coming, coming through on there. I take it on the napkin, on the paper towel, and I just quickly just get off the excess. You don't want it gobbed on there. Alright, so then I close that up. And then I believe the restrictor, that actually goes on there after you put the piece on there first. I kind of figured it out. And then I realized, wait a minute, if that goes on there like that, you're going to have to get some lubrication for that. So I'm looking at it, and I was like, well, why isn't it lining up? You know, why don't the holes line up? I was trying to figure it out. Then I realized that it's slotted. When I looked at it closer, you'll see that that pin right there goes in these slots that I'm pointing to right there. They kind of line up. So you got to line it up first, and then once it's lined up, the whole joystick shaft will turn to where you need it to be and then it kind of goes on and you're good to go so I have that piece on there I'm kind of wiping off the excess and then I think that's where I put the actuator on there which goes over everything and then that portion I realize I'm like oh that portion is actually what's touching the four-way restrictor there so because it's touching the plastic I kind of opted to add some lubrication so I added some on the edges here just to make sure that it's on there. Not really too much. Just enough because I know it's, it'll be rubbing on there. And I also put a little more because I probably touched it and spread it and messed with it. So I'm just going to... Yeah. Yeah, that's actually... That's me explaining. Yeah, this touches it, not this piece here. So... Um, I didn't really do much damage when I put it on the vise. It actually turned out okay because, um, you know, it'll fit the piece just fine. It's actually good that I sanded it slightly because it was kind of dented at that point. But it's good enough. It's working fine. So that piece, by the way, you can get it for like at Arcade Fix It. I think it's like twelve or thirteen dollars, something like that. That plastic piece on the bottom, if you ever crack it or mess it up. But I said, let me try it, and if I don't. You know, if I can't do it, then I'll just order it. But it turned out to be all right. So I put that over there. It's looking really good. Um, and at this point, 
um, I decided, you know what, it's going to be touching the four-way restrictor here. So should I lube it? I said, you know what, it can't hurt to put a tiny thin layer around there. So I figured the, the neatest way to do that was to actually just put it on the restrictor itself. I just kind of put a little bit on my hand there. And then I just spread it around in there. Because it's going to be, you know, it's plastic on plastic. And uh, it's going to be rubbing around, so you might as well. You know, you don't have to do that. I mean, there's no rule that says you don't have to or you can or cannot. But just I just did it because I felt comfortable. I said, why not? While I'm in there. So I'm just cleaning off the excess because I did not want a lot in there. I just wanted a really, really thin layer. And then, of course, you have the... Um, the nylon washers which go in between there so the easiest way to do it um, you have to actually put it in that restrictor piece while it's upside down like that or else there's nowhere to put it on the other piece because they'll fall out so I just kind of put them in there here and once I put all four in I kind of have to hold the whole thing together you see me kind of even holding the actuator and I just make sure at that point, once I line up the screws, I'm able to flip it over and just kind of make sure it's on there and it looks really good. So now I'm taking the screws, which go through everything there, and they kind of dig into the plastic. And I grab my, I really don't recommend doing this, but I grab my drill. I set it to low torque. Uh, you don't want it to over tighten it because it's plastic. You can see, I don't put it in all the way because later on I'll kind of hand tighten it with that drill. So just be careful when you're putting it in. You don't, you know, you only get one shot at this. You know, those pieces are really not made anymore. And the actuators that I did order, like the plunger and the other stuff, um, the spring you can get anywhere, but I'm just saying the um, plastic pieces, those are new old stock. So, you know, you can see me knocking on wood saying, hey, don't over tighten it. So I'm knocking it in just where it's not tight at all. And then you'll see me hand tighten it where I turn the drill itself. Yeah, so I'm doing it like that. You gotta hand tighten it. If you use a drill and, and overdo it, you can actually snap something in there or strip it. And that's not what you want. So that's me tightening it some more. I'm kind of just going back and forth on opposites. And I'm just going through and making sure that they're all nice and snug. Yeah, so that felt good to me, and you can see here, I'm just testing it out where it's hitting the edges and it's not hitting the diagonals. And uh, it felt really, really tight and nice. Like, it felt brand new, you know. I was really shocked and amazed how great it turned out. The other thing, too, is that the logo joystick, I think I explained here, the logo joystick, because of that pin, does not turn. It's not, not like a typical joystick where you could turn it in your hand because they wanted the Atari logo to be upright. So instead of turning it, um, having it turn, they have that pin locking it in place so that's always facing the, the proper direction. So when you install it, just make sure and be conscious that, you know, the Atari logo has to face the right way. It's going to be facing up and straight and that it will not turn. So this is me just putting some simple green on it, taking off the excess grease, you know, that I kind of got on it while I was handling it, trying to undo everything to show you guys. Um, but it came out really, really good. I'm really surprised at how well it came out, like I said. All right, at this point, I have 400 grit and I have 2,000 grit paper. I decided to use the 400 because, you know, these things are old and I wanted to make sure there was no rust or oxidation on these actual switches. So what you do is you fold it in half and you kind of just take it. Um, I think at this point those were bent up, so I wanted to kind of straighten them out a little bit. And I think I did it to one of them, and then I decided not to push it, because if you keep bending them back and forth, you really don't um, want to do that, because they'll eventually snap on you. So I decided when I'm doing the lower one, I said, you know what, I'm just going to leave it, because I don't want to keep bending it back and forth. So they look really good. They were actually in really nice shape. I think I bent that one slightly a little bit, because it was too much. I didn't want it to touch the other one. And they all look pretty good. So at this point, let me just think here. Um, I have more of these actually for, I have extras that I have for one of the missing um, micro switches because there was, there was actually a micro switch um, button on there. 
So I have to replace that button. I actually ordered those, so they're on order. They should be here by the, by the end of this video with the magic of editing. Um, but as far as this goes here, the uh, 400 grid is what I want to do first, followed by the 2000. So you kind of just fold it in half. You take one of the uh, leaf switches. Um, they're metal contacts, so what you're doing is just taking the rust off by kind of pulling up. You can see that I uh, made a mark there. So you do that a few times on each one. You don't want to do it like really hard. You just do it like very gently. Okay, so here I'm trying to figure out how these should go on. I know they go on those tips over there, but what I have to do, I'm just going to quickly check the footage uh, to see where they go. And I'm going to come back and this time we should have audio, so we should be good to go. All right, guys, so I have the joystick here. Um, I looked it up uh, by looking at the footage and it looks like they have little... There's like little pins. I don't know if you can see that. So you want to point it down and keep it inside the column here. So the pin goes in there and then the other end goes right there. So I'm going to kind of put this in there where it screws in. And again, I don't want to over tighten it because yeah, so there it is. When you, when you kind of do it, it pushes against it and it actu activates it. Perfect. So this one here, again, there's the pin and there's two, one, two. If you put it in on this one, it doesn't even work. You can't, you can't physically get it on that other one, so there's no way. I'm guessing these extra holes here for like the micro switch versions, they probably use the same plate for both. So I'm going to stick that in there. Yeah, again, you don't want to over tighten those because it will strip it. And here. And the easiest way to tell where you screw it in is that there's bumps all around. Like there's like bumps on the edges here. But these have like a, a weird kind of bump where it's like an angle here where these are just regular bumps. So again, I think this is just a universal one that they use for the Hall Effect joystick and all those other ones like on Roadrunner um, or Gauntlet. So now this one here, oops, put the little notch right in there. And then what I would do, like if I go, go back in time, I'd raid a whole bunch of the uh, Tari uh, original housing. I, I'd buy hundreds of these. <laughs> and stash them somewhere so they'd have to make more and then now you'd be rich because these things are like so rare. All right, so right now if I'm hitting this direction, it's hitting that joystick. You got this one hitting that side and then that one's hitting that side and that's hitting that side. And I'm gonna adjust them slightly just by bending them because I feel they're a little too close compared to the other ones. Where you kind of, you really should use like needle nose pliers to do this, but I'm just bending them slightly out. I feel they were a little too close here. Yeah, that's better. And this one needs adjusting. So that's the thing. Um, over time, like on home use, it doesn't matter, but over time, like in an arcade, you have to actually adjust all of these because they get, you know, out of whack. Yeah, there's, this one still needs some bending here. All right, so touching it, touching it, left, right. So that's it. Completely rebuilt joystick. It's looking great. Um, I'm going to show you exactly, uh, I guess in the se next segment, we're going to work on the buttons and the harness, and we're going to actually put this thing in there. I'm going to take out the old joystick. I'm going to pop this in there and see if it works. Okay, guys, so I have the tumbler. I brought it from the other room. And by the way, Frankfurt Arsenal, that's a company that makes this. They totally stand by their product. I actually had a defective um, screw right here. Uh, called them, and I guess they misunderstood. <laughs> they sent me a whole new uh, one of these. Um, but because I put that screw in, it kind of messed it up, so it stripped it. So I kind of forced the screw into here, and I'm using it as a spare. They just told me to toss it out, but I'm using it as a spare to empty everything into. Um, it does not come with this extra one, but if you just get a large bowl, and this strainer was also separate... Um, you don't want to be digging through this forever because it takes kind of forever to dig through everything. 
with tiny little parts. It's kind of easier just to strain it. So I'm just going to take that off. And I'm going to lift this whole thing up here. It's just easier. So I'm just going to dump everything in here. And I'll just put this on the floor. So what I'm doing now is kind of sifting through the parts. Kind of just making sure everything's falling in there. And I'm going to just grab everything here. So as you can see, I mean, this thing did an amazing job. This is the one that was the, the most rusted, I think, at that point. Um, you can still see it's pitted. If you look here, you know, it's pitting around here, around the edges and stuff. But this thing was completely rusted before, and now it doesn't have any rust on it. So this thing is awesome. You can see these other ones, too. I'm just trying to shake the uh, walnuts off of it. They came out really good. You can see some walnuts are still in there. You kind of just got to shake it out. Yeah, just trying to take these out. So yeah, so it did a great job. This is the, I don't know if you guys remember, the rusted spring. This is it. <laughs> it looks brand new. This is the one uh, that I ordered. Um, I probably could have used this one. I didn't realize it was sticking because of that, um, you know, the plunger that was uh, defective. But yeah, pretty cool. These are, I'll take out some of the springs. Basically, they're, this one's still pretty cruddy, actually. But it's still, it, it's serviceable, it's usable. But I want to show you these here, how they came out. And I'll just hold them up. Oops. That one's kind of caught there. I'll leave that one out and put this one. So yeah, look at them. They came out pretty good. Yep, totally rust-free. So I'll put those on the side. I'm going to take all these out. These are the fasteners. This is the one that looks like it has still a tiny bit of rust on it, but this one was caked on pretty good. But pretty much um, close to new. They work great on painted bolts too that'll take the paint off. So just kind of going through the rest of this here. Wow, they look really good. Fantastic. Yeah, so this is another piece. I can't remember where this came from, but I tossed it in there just to see what would happen. Uh, but yeah, so those are those. Let me put all those in one pile here. You have the rest of the springs. I'll put those in a separate pile. And they did tangle up, not really too bad. There's a couple that are tangled. Let's see if I can find them here. And I'm going to show you the Eclipse as well, because those were like night and day. Let me just put all these down. So these are the Eclipse right here. Occasionally they'll slip through these, um, this strainer. I actually have a scoop as well that has uh, smaller holes in it. Oh, there's one right there trying to escape. And I'm dropping sawdust and, uh, uh, sorry, walnuts dust everywhere. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but yeah, so it gets a little messy. You could see some fell through the cracks, like right here, when I shook it. So I'm going to take these out. What I may do is I'll put it back in the other bin and I'll just strain it again. Just strain it a couple times. Just to make sure you have everything. Really, ideally, what you want to do is just number everything. Just say, okay, you know, I have 10 Eclipse, you know, 9 of these other nuts and springs and stuff. Just inventory it so you know that you have something missing when you use it. I try to use it, like, like I said, like this is t a ton of them. I try to use it all at once, that way um, you're not really wasting it. So I'm just going to kind of stick it on there, a little cockeyed. Just strain it one more time. They suggest you use like a bucket. You can get those at, oops, at Home Depot. But yeah, it looks like I got everything as I get everything everywhere. There you go. But it's fine, I'll just vacuum later. So that's it. Let me go ahead and uh, what I'll do is you can reuse this a few times. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and save it. Just store it away. As long as it's stored in a dry place, I think it should be fine. So I'll be fine storing it here at home. And that's it, so let me take this out of the way.
And you can see all the dust that I got here. <laughs> you know what? Let me pause for a second. I'll clean it up. Uh, just pour it in the garbage and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the control panel laid out here. Buttons have been removed. I had previously removed these over here and I cleaned off. This had a little bit of cigarette burns on it. They're kind of melted a little bit slightly. Um, but you know me, I love that kind of stuff. Um, I call it patina like we do <laughs> with anything else where it adds value to it in my opinion because it kind of shows the era, you know, they, people were able to smoke in arcades. So they just lay their cigarette right across here and start playing video games. So um, I have to still take this off. These um, bolts right here, I'm not gonna reuse. Uh, looks like somebody replaced it when they put the other um, Wyco joystick in there. So when I'm looking at it here, some of them have raised letters, others don't. So you know they're not even matching. So I'm not gonna bother. I have some nice black ones I could put in there. Um, they do have the raised letters on the ones I have, but I'm working on getting ones that aren't. But I'm not going to be picky about it. It looks way better than it is, so I'll put those other ones in there. I already removed these like you guys saw. And then um, I just wanted to show you these here. So these are the original buttons in here, and I wanted to polish them up, but these do not come out. They're kind of permanently in there. They're like the cheaper ones. That kind of shows how Atari was. Like they kind of took shortcuts to try to you know, um, make more money, I guess, with less output and less cost. So they didn't have a light up marquee. It was just a piece of wood. This here looks like they use the cheaper buttons as opposed to like this one here, which comes out, which has the E-clip on the bottom there with the spring inside. This one kind of just snaps in there and you can't really remove it to clean it. Um, so what you can do, um, you can put it on a drill chuck and try to get in there with a little piece of, uh, you know, with, with something. I'm going to try it just for just for a second just to see if it works or not, but I'm going to show you how to polish them up. So I'm taking the laser out, by the way. <laughs> I'm actually going to do this. I have it over here. What happened was I only had one yellow button here, so I ordered some, again, from ArcadeAdventures.com, and they had, for the same price, these were like three bucks on eBay plus shipping, so instead of buying two of them um, for $6 plus shipping, it would have come to about 10 bucks altogether. I got these here, four of them for like, I think it was $12 for four of them. So I said, you know what, let me just order the whole set. Um, so I ordered them there at arcadeadventures.com and uh, I'm just gonna put them all in and they're a perfect match. They are the cheaper ones that don't have the Eclipse. So I thought that was kind of cool that it matches my original ones here. Um, so I'm probably gonna use these. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to take one out. I'm going to take out the yellow one for comparison. We're going to kind of compare it to this one. Um, and I'm going to try polishing this up and then we can kind of compare them side by side and, you know, but I'm most definitely going to use these. They feel exactly the same to me. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do that. And then with the red one, I'll actually put these new ones in here so I won't get confused. I'm going to take one of these uh, actually, this one right here with this one. I'm going to polish it up and see if I can get it to look similar to this. So, but either way, they're way better than they were when I first pulled them out. Uh, so, the first thing I do, you want to be a little careful. Um, you want to get a drill chuck that you can kind of just do manually here that won't squeeze it so hard because these are made of plastic. And if you tighten them too much, if you like tighten it here, it'll actually, so I'm, I'm actually tightening it. There we go. So I just do it a little bit, not too hard, just so it won't move in here, but you don't want to crush it because it will break the plastic, this chuck here. So you got to be really careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with three, kind of show you guys what I do here. And I'm going to use this cloth right here. And I'm going to shake it just to make sure it's good to go. I'll shake two as well. Okay. So... This is going above and beyond to try to salvage them here. So this one is a little more abrasive, number three. It's kind of weird. They should make this like one, two, and three, in my opinion, reversed. Because <laughs> this is the last one that you do. And then you work your way. So it really should be one, two, three, but I don't know why they do that. So I'm taking this here. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit on it like that. And then you just wanna Hold it down, kind of get it everywhere, getting it on the side. And that's it, just go to town. Just a lot quicker when you do this. It takes about a minute or so, 30 seconds. Right now I'm doing the front. 
Now I'm going to do the side here. It's kind of better if you hold it like this, probably. Yep. You can do this with a joystick as well. That's what I had wanted to do. So that's it. So I'm looking at it. I'm just inspecting it. I could use a little tiny bit more. So I'm going to take some of the three. This stuff lasts forever. I got the big bottles. They sell them on Amazon. I can give you an affiliate link if you want in the description. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps the channel out. Um, you know, you get a couple cents or whatever for everything bought with the affiliate link. It's pretty cool that Amazon does that. So you'll see that a lot in my videos now because I'm trying to you know, pay for the equipment, the uh, wireless mic that I invested in. And I am going to have a t-shirt campaign if you guys are interested. If you look back in this video, you see I was wearing it. It says Delusional's Arcade on the back and on the front as well. Kind of like a pocket style, a smaller one on the front. But uh, I'm kind of still messing with that, with the artwork. Not really sure if I want it in color or black and white. All right, so there it is. If you look at it compared to the other one, I'm gonna take it out now. This is the new one, and this is the old one. It kind of looks shiny now because I'm buffing it out, but in reality, it very could, it could get like dull, which is fine. What's this here? Oh, that's part of the, that's part of the cloth on there. So let me go ahead and do this now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on again. I just wanted to kind of look at it off. So now I'm going to do two. So two, I think, is the one that's like different color here. Yeah, it's more of a darker. So I'm going to take that. And again, it may turn gray or like cloudy looking. So that's a little shinier. And now I'm going to take the last part over here. And this one, I tend to just spray directly on it. I put a little, way too much on there, but I just wanted to get it. All right, let's see. So here it is. We'll take it out. Look how shiny that is. <laughs> That's so cool. So compared to, let's actually stick it in the original. You can kind of tell that's way shinier than the outside. You can see this is kind of dull there. So for this, unfortunately, this does not fit in the chuck. So you're just going to have to do that manually. So I'm going to quickly just go over this. Um, I don't think I really need three. They're not really that scratched. Let me actually just skip that portion. I'm going to go to two on this. Uh, here it is. So I'm just going to put it on the edge here. I need to just manually kind of rub it into it. It's just slightly abrasive, I guess at the microscopic level. And it, um, if you're doing it right, it should give it like a dull, it kind of dulls it like it just did. I'm doing this really quick too. I'm just kind of giving you the idea because I'm going to use my buttons that I just bought. But um, now let me go ahead and spray it with this. I'm going to go ahead and polish it. So you get the idea. So you can... Can get them looking really good. Just put the blood, sweat, and tears into it. So let's go ahead. Before I do that, I'm going to clean off. I sprayed some on my panel here. And it's fine. It's harmless. It's not going to do anything. Especially the one that I just did, which is the polish. It's not abrasive. 
Okay, so let me go ahead. I'll grab one of the springs. I'm going to put a spring in here. I'm going to put this right in there. And then I'm going to take one of the Eclipse. Just put it on the edge here. See if I'm able to snap it. Yep, snapped it on my hand. And that's it. Look how great that looks. It's awesome. So here is... There's a slight color difference, I guess. This is the one I just ordered. Um, that's why I don't want to order just one, because when you order just one brand new one, like I wanted to order just one yellow, I was afraid they'd be a little off, and I wanted them to be uniform. So if you don't see this next to it, and you just look at the other one, which I'm going to pull out now, it looks perfectly normal to have the two like that. So these are probably going to go in there like that. I only have, let me see here. Yeah, see, these are the originals, which I'm going to try to polish. Let me try polishing these, see what happens. All right, see, you can't really do anything, and this part's kind of loose. So, let's see if it works. I'm going to take the polishing rag. I'll just put some stuff right on there. The problem is, I think, is that it's going to get stuff stuck on there in between, and you're not going to be able to get it out. <laughs> but we'll try it. So right now, the only thing that's turning is this top portion, not the side there. Yeah, it's not working good at all. I'm going to call it quits with that one. That was three, and then we're going to put two on here now. But these are in pretty good shape, I have to say, considering. I've seen worse. On my Super Pac-Man, those things were, like, so faded. And when I did this, it totally brought all everything, all the shine back. While I'm at it, I'm going to just uh, quickly buff the outside here. Yeah, these are way harder to do <laughs> than the other ones. See, it's kind of dull. Here, I'll compare it to the one I just did. Is this the one? Yeah, this is the one, actually, because it has the E-clip on it. See the difference? How it kind of dulls it a little bit? But once you put that final... Uh, plastic thing on it, number one, which is, uh, I keep spraying it on here. Um, let me go ahead and buff this now. Yeah, I can take it out. So see how it's like stuck on there? Gets in between. This one's kind of a pain because you can't take it apart. So you're going to have to like hold it up while you kind of get the rag in there. It's possible. I mean, if you're really determined, you can do it. it looks way better than it was. Yeah, see it's still, there's stuff in there. So yeah, so my opinion, these are more valuable. They're easier to do. This one's still, I have to work on this. So I'm going to, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, I really like how these look. <laughs> I wish I had more of these. I, I don't know if I do. Um, actually, I think I might. What do you like? Do you like these with the E-clip or the ones that I bought? These two were actually just a bonus. I ordered them because they were the same price, practically. But these yellow ones I definitely need. They go right here. So, not sure if that looks better or if this looks better. Yeah, I think these match are the same type. So I'm going to leave these. I'm going to save these for a rainy day, but I am going to clean up my whole lot. I'll do that off camera. 
Um, but in the meantime, let's just get this going over here. So these are all the springs and everything I need for the other stuff. I'm going to kind of leave on the side since I have new buttons. So I think the first thing I'm going to do here, let me, uh, just double check here. Yeah, these are the new ones right here. So there's one, two, this one seems a little, oh, it's just my imagination. It is three and four. I'm going to put these on the sides. These are the ones that go in there. I'll take this out of the way. And I'll put this on the side as well. And that. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to remove this joystick here. All right, so we finally got the joystick off. I think this should fit. Yeah, the balls, it's kind of big enough because it was the Atari joystick. Um, it does have like that bigger uh, base here because you have to be able to stick it through there. You can't take it out because obviously you saw we had a big hard problem taking the joystick out. We had to take the whole thing apart. So they designed it uh, for that. I don't know if I wanna, maybe I'll just clean it right now. It's simple green and a rag. I have an old rag here I can use because let me put that over there. I don't really feel like spray painting this right now. Right now it's um, it's not snowing outside, but a friend of mine says it is by him down south, so it's probably coming our way and it's freezing outside. It's like in the teens, so I'm not looking forward to spray painting it. All right, so I went and grabbed my bolts that I had. These bolts, I think I got them on like Amazon ages ago. I ordered like, I'm gonna have hundreds of these. But these have, you can see it has the uh, writing on them. You guys are gonna kind of frown on that. I'm gonna put them in anyway, just for now. Um, I have a deal in the works right now on Klob. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can get, there's a guy who ordered a whole bunch of them. Um, so I'm trying to get like 750 of them uh, for really cheap something like 30, 35 bucks or something like that. So we'll figure it out. I have to kind of ask what's going on there, but I may swap them out in the future. But for now, these are way better than the ones that are in there and they're already black and I don't have to spray paint them. I'm not really a fan of spray painting, sanding them. You can sand them off and then spray paint them. I feel the spray paint after a few years will just rub off. These are kind of just like chemically put on there. They're black oxide. So they'll be fine. All right, guys, so I was having some trouble putting this joystick in because the other joysticks like these, you just take the E-clip e out on the bottom, you pop it out, and it becomes flat. So you can just lay it down flat and just put it on. But this one, this thing sticks out, and you can't. It's such a pain. So what I'm doing, actually, is I just have to prop it up. So I'm looking around the room in the arcade, and what do I find? My mini arcades. So these things are going to help me prop them up. I think it's pretty funny that we're using these, but... So I'm just taking a couple of these, put them on that side. One and two, and we should be good to go. There we go. Yep, perfect. So now I can stick this on here like that. I gotta make sure that this is the top of the panel. That's where the uh, cone switches are. And the Atari logo has to face up. So when I put it in there, it's gonna be facing up. Perfect. So I think when I'm putting this on here, yeah, they only line up that way. Oh, man. I wish I had known that. Okay, so if I... What I'm trying to say is that this is actually a rectangle. I completely forgot to look at that when I was putting this on. So the Atari logo is facing up, and if I face it up, the holes do not line up. You see, this one's over here. So I have to actually mount it here, like this, so that the holes all do line up. But... If I do that, the Atari logo joystick is going to be facing sideways. So I have to actually pop this off, turn it, and pop it back on. So when you are mounting the logo joystick, you have to, there has to be a way 
that you can tell. Because I'm looking at it, it looks perfectly square to me, but my eyes are just playing tricks on me here. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to go like that. Let's see, one. No, actually, see, I'm doing it again. That's how it's supposed to go. So that lines up perfectly. So what I'm going to do um, is I was going to get a piece of tape or something to, to mark it. But there should be something on the joystick. There has to be like some sort of marking here. So it needs to go on that way. And there's like a serial number here. So I have to remember that the Atari has to face the serial number this way. Right now it's sideways like this. So let me go ahead and take this out. I'll do it really quickly. I'm just going to take these four things out, pop this off, and I should be able to turn it pretty easy. Okay, I tell you, we're learning every, every step of the way here. So I'm going to go ahead and just take all these out. All right. So there's four. And the, I got to remember those uh, washers cannot fall out. I had a heck of a time. I dropped one on the rug and I spent a good half hour looking for it because it's virtually invisible. Take that out. So there's two right there and there's two, three. Let me put them in so I won't lose them. And that's the fourth one. All right. So I'm going to take this out and then let's see right now it's facing up. I need it to face that way. So there's a serial number there and I'm going to face, so I'm going to turn it the other way. So I'm going to go like this, take this out and I'm going to turn it this way. And now I'm going to do that. See if that helps. Okay. That should do it. So now it, let me just double check it. This is going to be facing up before I secure it. The Atari logo is facing up and the holes line up. Okay, cool. Actually, I can leave it in there. Oh no, I can't because these will fall out if I do that. These little washers. So you got to kind of tilt it a little bit. And let me tell you what a mess. <laughs> what a fiasco with this joystick. And I mean, if it felt like a Wyco, it'd be different, but it, I'm not sure if it does. <laughs> we'll find out. So I'm not tightening them all the way. Don't forget, you can't, you got to hand tighten these. So now I'm just putting it in a tiny bit. All right, now I'm turning it. Awesome. All right, so now it's in the correct way. So let's go ahead and put this in there now. Let me just turn the camera real quick so I can see. There we go. So the Atari logo, this is the top. This is the top of the panel. That's the top, so it's gonna fit in like this. Man, good thing it was easy to do. If I had to take off one of these things again to get to that, I don't know, would I have left it sideways? Maybe. Let's get this on here. So I'm going to put the washer. I'm going to put the lock washer. And I'm going to put the nut. Okay. And then I will put the thread locker on last. So now it's lining up perfectly. I'm actually glad that that happened. So you guys can see it on camera because, um, you know, I would hate to say, hey, this is really easy. And then I just happen to get it right. And then you guys have problems when you're putting it together. So I'm glad I had it so you guys can see what not to do. Because as far as I know, the only person that has a rebuild video, um, at least putting it together, would be um, that Tim guy. 
who's a good friend of mine. So this is actually the second one. I figured I had a hard time trying to figure out how to do this. So I said, let me figure it out with you guys. And that way people have a reference where they can just go to it. If they want to research it. That's the whole point of this whole channel is to show people how to do stuff and to um, kind of save and preserve how to do things. Because <clears throat> these will be around uh, another 30 years if we keep rebuilding them like this. So hopefully they will. Let me get them repaired and, and whatnot. All right, so that's in. Now the last one is over here. I can't wait to play this thing. <laughs> the joystick in my hands when I rebuilt it uh, felt really good. So I wanted to test it for real. Now I'm going to lift this up because I know there's a washer somewhere hiding. Man. Let's see. Oh, there it is. So... Yeah, paying it forward. This is my way of paying it forward to the internet. Making sure people know how to rebuild their Atari logo joystick. And by the way, he did a Hall Effect, which is which has a whole electronic PCB in there on top of this. Um, it actually connects with these extra stuff over there. But uh, I'm doing the easiest one, I think. I think the Leafs are the easiest. The micro switches, I guess, are too, but then they have that extra um, rubber grommet on the bottom. Man, this is not cooperating. There we go. get this in there all right so before I put it all the way down I'm getting them pretty close to the bottom see this one's close and this one's pretty far sorry I'm blocking you it's just hard to get to these things okay so what I'm gonna do is you just take a tiny bit of thread locker and you grab it, make sure it's pushed in, and you just squeeze a tiny bit. This one's actually finishing up. There we go. So there's one, and then you just kind of try to screw that on there as best you can. Let me actually, man. The other thing too is you cannot fit any kind of screw in here. <laughs> Atari, what are you doing? I'm really kind of angry at them right now because they're making it virtually impossible to get this, this thing restored here. There's a drop there, very tiny, a little bit. You don't want it getting on the CP at all. And then this last one over here. this one here there we go so I just want to close that before it leaks everywhere I'm just trying to hold the bolt to not let go of it I don't want it to leak onto the CP <clears throat> okay so the problem I'm having right now <laughs> I'm gonna need some needle nose pliers to do it is that I can't get this in here because of these little things. See how I can't fit it? So I'm gonna have to either use shorter um, bolts, which I do have somewhere. Um, the new ones that I'm ordering I think are shorter as well. Or I have to get some sort of long, um, I don't know, some sort of uh, driver that can take that big bolt in there, which I doubt. Let me tell you, I don't want to say it's cursed, but this joystick sucks. <laughs> I can't find my good pliers. Don't know where they are. I misplaced them. So I have these really crappy ones, which are terrible because they're all worn out. So they're going to slip like crazy, but basically you have to kind of 
painstakingly turn each one like I'm doing. I'm going to hold it on the bottom just to make sure it's in there. And I'm just slowly turning each one like that. My other pliers are way better. They're a little bigger too, so they would work perfect for this job. But Hey, I'm glad I put thread locker for now because I'm not going to be able to tighten these like really, really tight like I like to. Man, let me tell you, this episode, <laughs> it's a lot longer than I thought it'd be. And that's what editing, I cut a lot. I left a lot on the cutting room floor, like they say. It was just a, a lot of things to do. I wanted to deliver good content, I try. I don't wanna just give you a three hour video, but I feel this, video was very essential to essential really to do because you know leaving it long uncut well mostly uncut because you know when you want answers there are people who really want answers they want to see in detail what you're doing and then you could fast forward if you want i don't recommend it because i usually talk about cool stuff in between like i am now or you can just fast forward if you want but you know there's people that want details that I've gone through videos and I've watched them like 20 times trying to figure out how to do something because they're not giving you that level of detail that you want. Okay, so what I was saying is that <laughs> my battery keeps dying. I'm getting horrible at this. Um, I actually started putting the leaf buttons in. I'm just gonna summarize it. But uh, anyway, I was saying that the level of detail that people want is they want this whole video with everything in it. Um, so you guys already know um, I'm going to do this last one so you can see how to do it, but I already put this one in and these two. And I did not realize that there's different versions of these uh, these things over here. What ended up happening was, now I'll go get it because we didn't record that. This one here, if I were to put it in, you can see how it's shorter. This is meant for a wood control panel so that it sticks through a little more and it has like a little, I guess, riser you can use. But this one is kind of different where it's built with this little riser right kind of built in there. So it kind of sticks up for metal control panels. So this did not work. It was my spare that I had. I actually chucked it right now in my spare parts bin. And luckily, because I did buy this joystick, it came with the whole harness, came with the leaf. These things here, I just grabbed one. I just unplugged it, which I'm about to do here. So here's one, that's the ground. And that's the other one. Doesn't matter which one you connect it to on leaf switches because you're just basically making the points come together but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on there that's it and then I have to clean them so I'll do that in a little bit and yeah so my battery died let me actually turn it here so I can see what's going on so I've been pretty bad my battery has been dying left and right um, I was going to plug in my camera and I decided not to, but yeah, I have about four spare batteries though, so there's no excuse. <laughs> there we go. So I'm tightening that. I'm going to actually loosen this real quick. I tightened it too much. So I can't easily get to it. I just want to move it to be even with that one. It's being a little picky. This one and that one. All right, so this micro switch. Oh, it's so loud. It's not even cherry. It's a, uh, I want to say zippy, but it, it says V10 on it. If you guys know what this is, I'll hold it up here. It says V10 on it, and it's super loud. You can hear it. Oh, it's pretty awful. Yeah, so I don't know. This, it, usually Cherry will say it right on it, Cherry, or Zippy, and this says nothing. So this was louder, wow, louder than a, uh, than a Zippy. Okay, so everything's on. We have the leaf switches. We got the joystick. Um, we got to plug in the joystick. And I didn't label anything, but I assumed we'll just stick it in, right? Trial and error. And then I'll switch them around if we need to. 
Looks like one of them broke though. Oh, it broke off the of this one. Let's see, yep, broke off right here. Oh well, did not happen on my new one, so I'm not worried about that. Wow, these things are on there. That's why they broke. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just stick these in there, hope for the best. Um, I'm kind of limited where I can plug them in. So, fingers crossed that I get it right. If they don't go on one way, I usually put them on the other way, but these are still pretty loose on here. Sometimes what I do is I'll squeeze these on here. It makes them a little better, but yeah, actually that one's pretty good. Let me just squeeze the rest on there. Gotta be delicate because these things will break, you know. All right, that's fine. I don't even know if it's supposed to go there, but honestly, I'll figure it out with trial and error. So this one can go there. Then we got the ground, which I have to loop around and that's what I'm saying these things are gonna break oh never had it before they just bent the crap out of it could have gotten like that from shipping too and the last one is right here so again, it doesn't matter where you plug it in. I could plug ground over there if I wanted to. It wouldn't matter. You're just, with leaf switches, you're just kind of making the two contacts connect. So when you connect these two, it sends a pulse to, to go where it's gotta go. I'm just gonna put that on a little lightly. Yeah. All right, so let's stick this thing on. Look, check it out. See how cool it looks. Let me turn it around here. Nice. Looks like it lifted it. Oh no, that's already like that. Okay. I thought I lifted it and messed it up. So it is kind of dirty. I'm going to quickly use some simple green on it. I've just had, uh, I guess the grease and stuff got on here when I was uh, doing the joystick here. And I'll clean it better once it's on there. So that's it, looks awesome, check it out, beautiful. Okay, so let me stick this on the panel, we'll check it out, we'll figure out the directions and we'll uh, continue from there. All right guys, so I popped the panel on and believe it or not, I got extremely lucky. Everything was right, <laughs> so <laughs> everything works, up, down, left, right, it's all cool. So I'm moving it around, you can see it kind of goes in all four directions, one, two, three, four. There's not really any eight way going on, which is perfect. You can hear all the plastic pieces going. I can see why people, they probably hung on these things and broke them. But uh, this one is completely rebuilt. It snaps to the center like it should. Uh, I mean, it's working great. So buttons feel great. I didn't clean them like I should have, you know, with the sandpaper inside, but they seem to be working okay. Um, and these, of course, I redid as well. So let's go ahead and play a game. I'm going to shut this off here. And we'll kind of celebrate by playing a game. See if I can move in a little closer here. Yeah, that looks good. Good enough. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put a quarter in. And area one is where I want to start. I will do a last credit video on this. I just have to get a little better. I'm pretty decent, I can get up to level three. So, there's also a little trick you can do with a machine gun to keep getting it over and over, which I figured out. So I gotta mess with that. There we go. Right now, some machine guns. So you can get that a few times. You just gotta, you run out of time, so you gotta be careful. 
So I'm gonna go here, you get up to that edge there, you jump so they can't come out. It's kind of a pain to go back and forth. Oh man, I just died, that sucks. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Let's see. I did it again. <laughs> I jumped right into them. Okay, so here I'm gonna try doing it again. So if you go in the it right away, it doesn't do anything. So you have to kind of go a little far here. And I believe in this board, you have to go right there. And you can jump to avoid them. Let's see if I go down. See how it lets me get it again? So you can do that as many times as you want, but your time will run out, so you gotta be careful. So now I'm just gonna lay into them. I usually don't get these because I have the machine gun. And then I'm gonna try to hurry up here. I don't know why I did that, I rushed it. <laughs> I'm getting careless. These leaf buttons feel really good. And of course when you die you lose all your bullets, machine gun and everything. I did. <laughs> All right, plenty of time. <clears throat> so your bullets reset every round. <clears throat> Except if you have machine gun, it'll actually keep, or if you get over 50. So it should, yeah, it's reset it to 50. So I'm gonna show you the little machine gun trick here. Hopefully it'll come down. So you get the machine gun. I'm gonna jump and just keep jumping. Avoid all these guys. Oop, that didn't go quick enough. So I usually do that to around 60 is the most you can push it to with your 60 seconds left on the clock. So. You see me jump a lot because um, it actually jumps, goes faster walking than walking alone when you jump. All right, so that's the last time I'm gonna do that. Now I'm just gonna get everything I gotta get. So I'm just trying to go as fast as I can here. And I also learned wherever there's a railing, oops, I just died, shoot. Wherever there's a railing, you could jump down. <clears throat> so you can actually jump down the whole way without encountering a lot of the guys. But I don't wanna do too good, right? I wanna save it for the uh, last credit video that I'm gonna do on this. So awesome. All right, so there it is. You can see the control panel is all done. 
monitor is good, um, but mainly in this episode, we are focusing on the control panel, totally rebuilt. If you guys have any questions on that, I'll be really happy to help. Um, the only bad thing about rebuilding it right now is that there are no reproduction parts for it. So everything's new alt stock and they are running out. Like I said, you know, Arcade Fix It had it on his site, but there were like maybe three left of those plungers. Um, and I just happened to get one, so that's really good. Um, definitely not going to buy a spare, not at $25 each. <laughs> but uh, you get the idea, you know, when you're really in a... I definitely needed one on mine. Um, it was kind of useless without it because it was getting stuck. So yeah, I think it came out really nice, the panel and everything. Um, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Um, I'm going to be uh, starting a t-shirt campaign like I hinted earlier, but um, I just have to finish designing it. I got to make some prototypes first, but um, I really need to do some crowdfunding uh, with you guys to support the channel to get more equipment because I want to get a better camera. <clears throat> you know, this one has served um, me pretty well, but it tends to corrupt stuff, tends to corrupt data. I've lost data on this, which kind of sucks, but um, you know, I want to get one that's really professional. And um, I did borrow a friend of mine to do the, um, what is it, the uh, video for the Hako review. So, um, you know, that one turned out really well. I kind of liked it. It was the Canon um, ADD, but um, I'm not sure if I want DSLR or you know, a video camera. I'm not really sure. I'm still torn at that point. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to think, I think I'm going to fundraise to get more money and stuff to get that, to get better videos for you guys. So if you think this is good now, wait till I get some nice equipment here. I have the lighting and now I have the microphone that's wireless. Um, I have more than one mic as well. So when I have some arcade tours, everybody's going to be wearing mics. It'll be really nice. So, all right, guys, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. And I guess uh, we'll see you next time. Hit the bell icon as well to get notified. And the next video you see from me might be a live video. I might do something on the Raspberry Pi. My son has one and it's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, I might do something like that or any other streaming thing. I just, they're really easy to do. You don't have to edit and they get delivered immediately. And it's cool talking with you guys online, you know, with that. So, all right, guys, take care. We'll see you in the next one. Hope you like this one.